The pigtail catheter, which is just a catheter to the level of the diaphragm and injected to really visualize the renal arteries and the parenchyma to make sure there's no, you know, first of all, the location of the artery, second of all, to look for any uh, atherosclerosis of the, of the renal artery, <clears throat> and also to identify whether the, how, how the vessels are and also possibly how often they branch and what the caliber of the vessels are. So, uh -huh. so here we go. So it's, uh, this is the first picture of the kidney. <clears throat> Important in this picture is to rule out any significant stenosis, which there is not. Also, to look at the renal, make sure that, that the entire kidney is visualized, making sure that obviously there's no parts of the kidney that are cut off, because if that's the truth, then what may happen is that you may have an accessory renal artery. This is also very good because you can size the kidney, and you don't need to do intravascular ultrasound to size the kidney. You can make a, either a what we call as quality vascular assessment by measuring, or you can do an eyeball sizing of the kidney, which has been done for years, meaning of the artery, which has been done for years. But what we're planning on doing here, because it's available in our lab and it's 100% not necessary, is to do an intravascular ultrasound, which is going to give us the size of the kidney. Now, um, I would use, based on my assessment, a 6-millimeter balloon. Ivers measures it at 5.4, and, uh, and, and so, in my opinion, a 6-millimeter balloon is the right size. Um, I think it's the right way to, you want to ensure apposition of the, of the device up against the vessel wall. So here, the apposition will be ensured with a, with a 6-millimeter balloon. The other thing I want you to watch for is the branching. <clears throat> and, and as we know, with the Paradise system, there is no reason to go to all different branches. So you can see here, you have a large bifurcation. So we are gonna stay proximal to the bifurcation. Is that okay? Decided to go with a six millimeter catheter. So that catheter is being delivered to us and that's the delivery console. And you can see by the, the writings, it's, you know, it's remote cartridge, uh, you know, coolant uh, cable and catheter. Sounds, and of yeah. course, uh, you know, it's a very intuitive uh, thing. So the catheter gets plugged in and then into, this is not normal saline, this is water, right guys? So this is sterile water for, that's gonna cool the balloon. So therefore it's important that that's also something uh, that, uh, that everybody's aware of. It's not normal saline, it's sterile water. Uh, I, I don't know if you can zoom in or not, but there's actually two dots that shows you where the electrical connection is. You just have to line it up, and then once it's snapped in, you have to connect it so the two dots meet up, and then you know that the system is ready. There's also two, uh, what the saline flush, where it runs to kind of fuel the cooling system. There's two plugs, which is very intuitive. You just kind of connect it here, make sure the connection is tight, and then through this last port, you just flush uh, heparinized saline, and then the catheter will be prepped. It's very intuitive. The setup is very fast and easy. And, uh, and the delivery of the therapy is also very predictable uh, because you can ensure apposition mm -hmm. on the vessel, uh, you know, with by testing, and I'll demonstrate how to do that. So very, very simple. I don't think you need IVUS. I want to emphasize that. But I think that if you have it, it's reasonable. You know, I don't think it's unreasonable to use it. Uh, same time, I don't think it's mandatory for the success of this device. So now we are going to go ahead and prime the device. The 6-millimeter catheter has been detected. And now... We're going to go ahead and prime it. So he's going to, now the prep, it's very intuitive. You press a button and it's prepping the catheter. The balloon is inflating and deflating, actually causing the, uh, the, the beauty is that, that now you're, you're prepping the catheter and removing all the air. So it takes all the guesswork out of whether you got all the air out or not, because the, uh, the machine is so intuitive that it does it for you and it's actually quite, quite easy. This is probably the longest part of the procedure, but again, I think it's reasonable because you don't want any air in the system, so the wait is actually worth it. Um, and in the, in the meantime, right now, obviously, you're just waiting for this to prep, and you can see the prepping cycle is almost over, and you can visualize that the, how the bubbles are being, you know, removed, but negative suction, and, and, uh, and actually, you know, redoing uh, in inflation and deflation to remove the, uh, the, uh, all the air in the system. We're just going to go ahead and introduce. And the important part here is that we don't want to deliver therapy 
across a branch point. So you're gonna see us give a little bit of dye just to make sure the branch point is not a fat place. Little dye. There, see there's no flow past the balloon now. So now we're gonna go ahead and deliver therapy. Uh -huh. So you can see it's, it first cools and you can see I have both, both of them on. You can't really see the balloon inflate here. It's cool and now you can see in seven seconds it's delivering therapy and, and you'll see it now it's done. I'll allow it to deflate and then I'm going to pull it back one balloon length. Okay, now when you get the green check mark, you know it's done. And I'm going to pull this back a little bit more about there, gentlemen. Everybody happy? See my yes. Yep, right there. And then next. And then it's perfect. So we're going to go up here now. Yep. So again, it's now inflating again. Now we're going to verify our position. Little die. Okay, you can see the die is in front of it. Now we're going to start. Okay, now it's going to cool down again. And again, you'll see that you'll feel the pain at the very end of the, inf uh, of the delivering of therapy. So no pain, no pain, and right about now. And right about now with two seconds, and that's it. Ice out very slowly. Don't lose the wire, David. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So we're going to come out with the device carefully without pushing the wire too far forward or backward. And then you can give uh, some uh, nitro if you'd like for spasm, which we normally try to. It's rare, but I just go ahead and give it because it's out of habit being an interventional cardiologist tend to give nitroglycerin. So we're just going to give a little bit of nitroglycerin. No, because I'm not going to come back to this side. So the question was whether I want to wait to give to the other side. The, I, my point is I've delivered therapy in this kidney. I just want to give the nitro to this kidney. Okay. Go ahead, flush. Uh-huh. Good. So nitro is given to now flush saline to me. So we deliver the kidney, flush the saline, very good. So now we're just going to walk the wire back and then we're going to take a picture. Fill it now. Yep. Fill it. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Okay, excellent. All right. Hold on, hold on. Fill it. Yeah, fill it. Yep. You have enough dye? Yes. Okay. Okay. And there, so in this picture, we're looking for any spasm of any vessels. There's absolutely no spasm. There's, a, there's no dissection. There's a wonderful, you know, delivery of contrast. Uh -huh.